on Putin's house, the Grange, says its structural and plan is a its structure and plan is a backbone of most English homes built ever since. Rosemary Hill, who's the author of God's Architect, says uh, his more important legacy is in the solid civic centres of Victorian towns. Generations of architects have been inspired by contrasts um, to try and bring humanity and coherence to the city. And William Curtis, for the Architectural Review, stated, uh, Putin set in place attitudes concerning the honesty of materials and structure. His direct solutions to domestic planning nourished the arts and craft movement and contributed to the very idea of the English suburban home. Okay, well, absolutely. Uh, that's uh, very good, Lee. Especially you've got that together in such a short time as well. But, uh, did you... Um, did you know about Fujin before? Or is no, that, you just got all that in two weeks. I read a lot of the, that book. Got no, no, uh, that's very impressive that you've got that all together in um, so much, such a short time. Um, so, any anybody questions or thoughts? I think if anybody's into architecture, then they should definitely go to Nottingham because I didn't realise mm. that that was part of his work. The background there and the. Um, This one in the, sorry, this one in Derby. I mean, so where, where is that? Where exactly? I uh, this one, it's yeah. literally like the cathedrals here. Yeah. Um, and so flower pots here. Yeah. yeah. Top end of town cathedral quarter. Yeah. Um, I don't live in Derby. I don't know uh, okay. well, but, but it's, it's like the ring road. There's a bridge there, yeah. and the ring road goes underneath it. So right. the inner ring road. But very near the cathedral. Oh yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. You can see it both. Yeah. Um, but also like there's just places like in Nottingham and. Like, when you look through the list and start researching it, you can't help but get like massively impressive in 15 years. Yeah. You know, 40 churches, 40 churches, 6 cathedrals, loads of houses. Schools, as well, didn't they? Uh, yeah, it wasn't just like the designing of the building either. You didn't just design it architecturally and then, right guys, go off and do your stuff. Yeah. You literally obsessed over them and like, do your oh, look, I'm Sorry, just have sex Can we just have one, one conversation? I'll go, go on, Lee. Uh, just, just the sort of ornateness of it all, you know, the. Uh, <coughs> The tiles he designed, the wallpaper, like yeah. literally everything. Yeah. Not just in his house, which he kind of designed, you think, oh yeah, I'll do that, yeah, I'll do the wallpaper, I'll design it all. Uh, but he did that in every building that he was associated with, money permitting, I think, anyway. yeah. Especially for ones that um, I've got uh, the one at Cheadle, with St. Giles Cathedral, that he did for the Earl of Shrewsbury, along well, with Alton Towers, yeah. which is uh, this one. And that inside, I should have got a picture of that inside, actually, but that's massively impressive. And I think because it was almost an unlimited budget with that one, um, it really it goes to town on it. And you can is it a cathedral? Uh, sorry, St. Giles Church. Church. Oh, yeah, no, church. I, I said church. cathedral. Somebody I said had, no, I think somebody did say cathedral, but yeah, church, yeah. Uh, I haven't been to that either. That's, that's Staffordshire. Yeah. So that's not that far from here, no. is it? What, what were you going to say something back there? What, um... uh, I was wondering if, um, did he do Derby Cathedral? Because I know no, that was done as part of there's quite a lot before, but that's like Pugin's style was taking that Gothic revival, so it was looking at Gothic buildings, which the cathedral would have been, right? Yeah. I'm right in saying that. I haven't yeah, researched yeah, Derby yeah. Cathedral, but yeah. you would have taken Derby Cathedral as a style, that medieval style, um, and revived that. So it's, it looks the same, because it is a sort of Gothic revival, so it's mm -hmm. like that Gothic style has been revived in much later, though, right? About 500 years or so later? I'm not sure the date of Derby Cathedral, I'm afraid. I'll tell you that, but but yeah, but I know to our eyes, you know, we probably don't see the difference between something that's authentically medieval and something that's a revival of it. Um, you know, maybe 400 years later, yeah. three, 400 years later, you know, we're probably not discerning enough, most of us, to spot that. But yeah, this is the point here is that it's um, that it's a revival of the Gothic, of the great Gothic cathedrals of the Middle Ages. Um, I suppose where the Gothic is seen at its most you know, exuberant. And yeah. Um, it's funny, isn't it? Because he's a funny mixture then of, you know, he's en avant, so it's kind of looking forward. Yeah. And I think we're absolutely right to say that he's often seen as the very beginnings of modern design because of yeah. the way he's not thinking about the facade of the building, 
He's thinking about what the building does in terms of its plan, the rooms' relations to each other, and then the outside of the building is a kind of result of that. Yeah. Whereas classical architects, you know, thought about designing this perfect facade, you know, symmetrical, well proportioned, and then the rooms inside the building just had to fit in with with the facade. He's doing the opposite. Yeah. So in that way, he's very modern, you know, as we'll see in future weeks. Um, but then it's kind of weird, isn't it, that actually. What he's doing is also completely looking backwards to the yeah. to the medieval period. So it's, a, it's the weirdest combination, really, of looking backwards and, and looking forwards. Yeah. I think you, you like those 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 strong Catholic ideals that the medievals had, didn't he? Especially like that, a much simpler time where he could, where yeah. he felt that you know things. And if you imagine the industrial revolution, everything's going crazy. A lot of money's coming in, but that also brings with it inherently a lot of problems as well. Yeah. So. You'd, have uh, slums in cities and, and population where there would be small towns started growing like Manchester I think and Leeds etc yeah, yeah. Liverpool would, would become really big sort of cities much more akin to what we see now obviously um, whereas before they didn't have those problems they weren't sure what to do in that in that sort of uh, in that time yeah. and, and hence I think Putin with the book the particularly contrast I think that from what I've read um, is sort of the book that was almost the manifesto that they took on as really enthusiastically thinking Right, this, this is radical thought, you know, it, it's, it's smart because it looks to the past and, you know, so... So just spell out, so com this book called Contrasts, yeah, which is, it had pairs of plates, pairs of images. Yeah, and it, it, some, some were um, fictional, so they'd be... Uh, I should, I'd look to have put more on, but there was yeah. one of... Um, we'll go back to you, you've got that first one. Yeah. This is actually a photo... Yeah, so some, I think these are real ones. I think it says somewhere college, <coughs> uh, probably King's College, right, Strand? And then something, something Oxford. I don't know, I can't read it from there, so it's probably better than that. Um, I mean, I've got one, I've got one we can look at later, but Christ's College, Oxford, and King's College, Strand. But I, I think somewhere... Uh, uh, real drawings of real places, and some are fictional to say, yeah. look at this town, it's what it looks like industrialised, yeah. look at this one, a more medieval, gothic, sort of... Well, what, I, what a lot of them are, and what I'll show you later, is it's the same view. And so he has a view of a town, how it would yeah. have looked in medieval times, yeah. uh, and, and a view of how it looks now, in 1840, when he's doing his book. To, to bring out what he sees then as the sort of the beauty that's been lost because of industrialization. So so this is crucial. He's looking back to the medieval period as this sort of more religious period, more Christian period, uh, that a kind, of, a kind of simpler way of life where people are in contact with their people are closer to their work. They're 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 not just you know a cog in a machine. They're involved in craft, perhaps in make, hand making objects, and so their work is satisfying. Uh, you know, it's just what you know. A few years later, you get Karl Marx, you know, saying similar kind of things that industrialization has has alienated man from his labour. You know, and Karl Marx advocating communism. So it's a similar kind of thing. Putin's saying earlier than Marx that industrialization produces alienation. Because we are, we just become a cog in a machine, doing one job repetitively in, in a factory, rather than you know making a candlestick, you know conceiving it, designing it, making it with our own hands, and having all the satisfaction from that. Um, so there, there is a kind of social, a sort of underlying social message in Pugin as well that, that gets taken out, as you rightly said. The, um, later on, you know, by the arts and crafts movement, as we'll come to in future weeks in the late 19th century. Um, anything else? Anybody else? Any thoughts or comments? Okay, well, that's, that's actually taken us, um, I know, quite a lot of, uh, um, you know, fleshing out the, the, the period. I mean,